Today I'm going to show you how I make corned beef and cabbage. It's a dish that I make every St. Patrick's Day, even though I know that it's not actually a traditional Irish dish. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what corned beef isn't and what it is, and then we're going to get to work and we're going to make some. So I already mentioned that it is not a traditional Irish dish that Irish people eat on St. Patrick's Day or really any other day of the year. It's sort of akin to spaghetti and meatballs and Italians. Spaghetti and meatballs is ubiquitous for Italian Americans, but in the year that I lived and worked in Italy, I never once saw an Italian cook eat or make spaghetti and meatballs. Spaghetti alone, yes. Meatballs alone, yes. But spaghetti and meatballs together, no. So this is not a traditional Irish dish, but it does seem to be an Irish American dish. And corned beef is actually Irish. And we're gonna get into a little bit of the history with corned beef. So it's called corned beef, not because there's any kind of corn with it, but because of how it was cured. And it was cured with these kernels of salt that look like corns. So I don't have necessarily the salt that they use, but this is a large kernel rock salt from um, local to me, Big Sur Salts. This is from down the coast, uh, it's Pico Blanco salt, but that would be the sort of salt that they use to cure the beef. So when I said corned beef is Irish, it was a huge Irish export. And so um, because the Irish had different salt taxes, they were able to create cured beef that they shipped everywhere um, all over Europe and even as far as the West Indies. So that's what corned beef is. And you can buy it a couple of different ways. You can buy it pre-cured. You can buy a brisket, which is what this cut of meat is, and cure it yourself. And I have done that, but it takes five to 10 days. Or you can buy an uncured corned beef brisket, like this one that I got at Trader Joe's, and just cook it just like that, which is what I'm gonna do. So a couple of reasons to cure the beef brisket would be um, to make it more tender and to add flavor. So this one actually has spices in there. You can see the mustard seeds and I see chili pepper flakes. So it's gonna have flavor. It just isn't necessarily cured in salt the way it traditionally would be. So we are gonna do it just like this. This is an uncured corned beef brisket. It's about four pounds. So all you do, um, and you can, the directions say you can just put this straight into the pot cover it with water, bring it to a boil. That's great, and I have done that, but I'm actually gonna add just some vegetables and things that I have for the first part. Then we're gonna fish those out, and to finish it off, then I'm gonna add in what I'm gonna call traditional, but the cabbage and the potatoes for a corned beef and cabbage dinner that we're gonna have later today. Now I said that Irish people don't eat this on St. Patrick's Day. What they do eat, what I found, is an Irish beef stew that's simmered in Guinness. And I tried that this week and it's delicious. So I will share the recipe to my blog. It's on my blog. I will share that in the description, but we are still gonna share this somewhat non-traditional corned beef and cabbage dinner for St. Patrick's Day. I'm just gonna add in some things. Um, you don't have to, you can cook that brisket straight out of the package. But I'm just gonna add this in for a little bit more flavor. And because I have the vegetables and I always try and put vegetables in my dishes. And because you're not eating this, it's just being added for flavor. It can be pretty um, uneven. Doesn't have to be very pretty. Certainly doesn't have to be a standard dice. And because I'm a huge proponent of using what I have, I am actually going to put in some Again, non-traditional herbs. This is a fennel that I got from our CSA farm. I'm just gonna put that in there, add a little bit of flavor. And some carrot. Just some flavor, onions, carrots, fennel, and then this brisket. So as I said, this actually has a lot of spices in it, so I'm gonna try and get as much of the spices in here as I can. I'm just gonna lay that on top of the vegetables. Kind of nestle it in there. 
And then you just want to cover that brisket, cover that meat with water. Let's see if I have enough water in here. I think we're good. That was the perfect amount. So I'm just going to turn on the stove, bring this to a boil. And then once it boils, I'm going to cover it, turn it down to a simmer, and we're going to leave it there to simmer for about three hours. So my brisket has been simmering now for about three hours, and I'm ready to add in some of the other ingredients. So you can see it is still bubbling away, but at about an hour and a half, I did come in and flip it over. And I'm just gonna bring that heat back up to high. I'm gonna add in the potatoes. So you can, depending on how big your potatoes are, you can slice them. These are pretty small, so I'm gonna put them in their hole. And I'm just gonna gently drop them into the liquid. And I have about a dozen of these small potatoes. So I'm just gonna bring that liquid back up to a boil, then drop the temperature down to a simmer again and cover it and we're gonna leave it there for 20 minutes and then we'll come back and add in the cabbage for the finishing touches. That liquid has come back to a boil. You see all those bubbles coming up from underneath. I'm just gonna put the lid on and drop it down to a low simmer. Okay, we have gotten to the almost final part of our corned beef and cabbage dinner. We have put the brisket in there. It has been simmering. We just added the potatoes. They've been in there for 20 minutes. Now the last thing that goes into the pot is the cabbage. So this is just a green cabbage. I am not sure why it's shaped like a cone and not round, but that's what the store had, so that's what I have. I just like to pull off any leaves that are less than firm, and then I just cut down the center of the cabbage. And you'll see that little core. I just cut that core out and then slice it into wedges. I remember years ago I made this dish when some of my son's friends came over from the robotics team and one of the kids, it was around March, St. Patrick's Day, and he said, um, oh, teenagers don't eat vegetables. Well, it's not totally true. My kids love vegetables, so you can get away with one head of cabbage in this pot, but my family eats a lot of vegetables, so I usually do two. But you'll just take those wedges, again, you've just cut out that core and slice the cabbage into wedges, and then you just drop this into the pot. Just careful that you don't, that the liquid doesn't flood over the top. I may only be able to fit one and a half cabbages in here. I'm going to push those down so they're mostly submerged, put the lid back on. And I'm just going to let that simmer for another 15 minutes. Okay, so our cabbage has been in there for about 15 minutes. We don't want it overcooked because we don't want it to be slimy. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the cabbage out, pull the potatoes out, and then let the meat rest before slicing it. You just want to make sure your potatoes are done and they stab nicely so those are done. I'm just going to pull those out and I'm going to pull the meat out and you just want to let that cool before you slice it. Okay, I think I got everything. So you can fish those carrots out and serve that as well, but because those were in there at the very, very beginning, they are a little too mushy for our taste. So I'm just going to do the potatoes and the cabbage and the meat and then make up some sauces for serving. So I've let the meat cool for a little bit and now I'm just going to slice it and plate it and get it ready for the table. Okay, there we have our corned beef and cabbage dinner. Again, I make this every year on St. Patrick's Day knowing full well that it is not a traditional Irish dish, but it is delicious and it's one of our family's favorites. If you like this video, please click like and definitely hit that notification bell and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. I hope this inspires you to get into the kitchen, use what you have, and make a delicious mess.